This is the speaking test for the International English Language Testing System. The candidate is Anya Sharma, and the examiner is Jonathan Lewis, number 41380. Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Lewis. Good afternoon. Can you tell me your full name, please? It's Anaya Sharma. Thank you. And what shall I call you? Please call me Anaya. In this first part of the test, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Do you work or are you a student? No, I'm not working at the moment. I'm just studying. What are you studying? I'm doing bachelor's in media and communication studies. Why did you choose that course? Um. Mainly because uh, I think this course offers you a variety of diverse options to choose from. You could be a filmmaker or an actor or a journalist. And also because I think this course offers you a chance to use your creative skills. And, mm -hmm. Let's talk about weather. Is summer your favorite time of year? Why or why not? No, it's not. Absolutely not. Why not? Um, I think because um, in my country, it's mostly summers for like six months in a year. And they're even hotter now because of the whole climate change situation. And it's just very sweaty. Your hair gets frizzy. Your makeup keeps melting. So it, it's, it's horrible in my country in summers. I see. So... What do you do in summer when the weather's very hot, and why? I get annoyed and cranky. Other than that, I try to stay home, or I try to drink plenty of water so I don't get dehydrated. And I also have to use a lot of insect repellent at night because uh, the mosquitoes won't let you sleep. So, would you like travelling during summer? No, not really, to be honest. I hate going out in summers. It's, it's miserable outside. I try to stay home mostly. Even if I go out with my friends, I make sure we go to a restaurant or someplace that's properly air-conditioned. I see. Did you enjoy the summer holidays when you were at school? Mm, yeah, I did. Maybe because when I was a kid, I did not care much about the hot weather as much as I do now. Um, or may maybe because I did not have to attend my school. But it was fun. My parents would take me out on lunch or to a park anywhere. My cousins would come over. We would play different in indoor outdoor games. Summer were fun. Now, let's move on to the second part of this speaking test. I'm going to give you a topic, and I would like you to talk about it for one or two minutes. Before you talk, you have one minute to think about what you are going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Here is your topic. Describe a time when you started using a new technological device. <laughs> Your preparation time is now over. Remember, you have one or two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I will tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Okay. So you asked me about a new technological device that I have started using recently, so about technology. We all love it, don't we? I myself like to um, own or use technological devices, but it's not always easy for me to obtain them because most of them are very expensive. 
So fortunately, uh, a new technological device that I started using recently was an iPhone. Now in our country, young children are not allowed to have their own personal mobile phone till the age of 17 or 18. Same was the case with me. I used to take my mother's phone for a few hours and then I would have to return it to her. But when I got my own personal phone before university, at first uh, it was really hard for me to understand all the features because they're very different from Android. But slowly but surely I got hold of it and then I installed all the social media apps. I tried connecting with all of my friends, the old ones, and it was when I started using, uh, watching a lot of Netflix shows. And then my university started and I had to um, travel by myself. And there we have a, an app, a transportation, a transportation app that's similar to Uber. So you could easily navigate all the maps and also the Google searches. So I think the main uh, purpose of technology is to make your life easy and it did fulfill the purpose for me uh, uh, during the time of COVID. We uh, were taking online classes and it really helped me at that time. Uh, it was very easy for me uh, to get enrolled in my course modules and see video lectures online and yeah I think it did fulfill the purpose. Which latest technology items would many young people in your country like to buy? Uh, I think it depends uh, on your gender, mostly. I would say the young boys would go for things like any new technological gadget, uh, probably the latest smartphone or laptops or some video games. And I think young girls, as they're uh, mostly focused on fashion and beauty related items, so they would probably go for equipments that can help them in styling themselves, probably something for their hair or a smartwatch, anything. Now, let's talk about expensive items that people purchase. How do the expensive items that younger people want to buy differ from those that older people want to buy? As I mentioned in my previous answer, that <clears throat> your gender has an impact on your choices. I think similarly, your age has an impact on your needs. Now, the younger people uh, below the age of 25, as they are not, most of them are not earning themselves. So they usually buy things to show off to their friends. So they buy things like gadgets and stuff that their friends have. So they can tell them that, okay, they can afford it as well. But for adults who has just started earning, has a job now, they are more cautious on where to spend, on what to spend, how to spend, because they just start learning the financial management. So... They don't overspend on stuff, while for the older people, they have more money and lesser years. So they don't really care much about the prices or how expensive the things are. But as they have more experience and they're wiser, so they mostly focus if the thing they're purchasing is profitable for them in the long run. Do you think that people are more likely to buy expensive items for their friends or for themselves? I think mostly, if you can afford it, people mostly buy it for themselves because you know how human mind works. Acquiring luxurious items temporarily increases your self-esteem. So even if you buy it for your friends on, let's say, special occasions, on their wedding or their birthdays, they're mostly a show-off because if you're really close to the friend, you don't care much about how much the thing you're buying, how much it costs. It's more about if they like it, if the gift will make them feel happy. It should be wonderful, not expensive. 
So I think it depends. If you can afford it, they buy it. How difficult is it to become very rich in today's world? I honestly have no idea about it. But I think um, if you're well educated and you're doing what you've always wanted to do, like your dream job, and if you work hard, you're determined, you're consistent, then you can be successful. And also, your surroundings have a great impact on your mind. So I think if you surround yourself with successful, intelligent people with great minds, so you can learn their innovative schemes of getting rich. Do you agree that money does not necessarily bring happiness? Mm. Money, ha happiness is tangible. I think you cannot measure it, you cannot buy it. So no, money does not buy happiness, but it does uh, provide you peace of mind. Like, um, if you have good amount of money, so you don't have to stress about the day-to-day -day hustles. You don't have to worry about the electricity bills, the hospital bills, all the other things. So it mainly depends on you. As human beings, we always have this desire to achieve more. And we're never fully satisfied with ourselves. Um, it could be, the, there's no specific definition for happiness. Um, for example, for someone who's not in a good, good health condition, for him, happiness would be, you know, being healthy again. Or for a beggar, it could be having a million dollars. And similarly, for someone, it could just be, you know, having a supportive, loving partner. But there's a person who has all of these things, but he's still, unsatisfied with himself. So we cannot say that money is the source of happiness. No, if you expect things and people to bring happiness to you, you will never be satisfied. In your opinion, what are the ways might rich people use their money to help society? Through a lot of different ways. They could build schools, hospitals, or provide services for the poor or you know they can donate to charities they should donate more i think because the problem i see in my country is that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer so there's this unbalanced um financial situation so i think they should try to help them the wealthy people should do more for the society we have reached at the end of this speaking test Thank you. Thank you.